I wanted to do a video. Um, basically, at first though, I'm not starting anything back up. Um, I just uh, some things I wanted to point out that basically supersede my own intentions and in, 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 in not posting videos. So I, I think this is something that can prove useful enough. I wanted to point it out, um, and also because I did <clears throat> feel a little bit bad still that uh, you know the numbers were low for the Radio Shack Transformer and some of the other ones and I, I wanted to see if I could improve that for people that had uh, tried some of what I suggested um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna cover some things there um, but a note first about the, the various bulbs um, to point out I guess um, this is all that remains of one of the first ones that I could get several years ago uh, it actually had a glass dome, ran extremely hot, uh, so I knew there wouldn't be any lifetime on it. It was very ugly and yellow, and I think I ran it 30 minutes and, and, and tore it apart to see how it worked. Um, and I believe that was 35 or 40 bucks back when I got it. Yeah, very not, not worth it. So I, I sat and waited for a long time. I have been running these daylights, the ones that I use. I've been running these for about eight months uh, in my house, uh, and, went, and, and I've been basically waiting. And when I was watching the LEDs. I was waiting for something that would come with a good warranty and get the price cheap enough. Okay, the, so these come with a two-year warranty, and I and I did choose these over some lesser quality bulbs because I figured that the internal circuitry would be better. The bulbs might run a little cooler, or we might have more efficient um, bulbs. And and honestly, from doing some of the tests, and I'm I'm, I'm sure other people are running into it, uh, that does prove to be the case. Um, again, these are dimmable. If we go to the, you know, Lights America, I think the last video I'd shown these at around 52 lumens per watt, but only at 70 lumens um, with, with six of them on a Radio Shack. And, and that was about as bright as I could get them. But, but I noted these were very sensitive, okay? And the, and the circuits in these are just, well, we can have issues with them. I don't know if we're, we're, they're best or in terms of efficiency for what we're doing. Um, and, and again, I think on AC, you know, if they run really hot, that's what's going to kill the LEDs. So uh, that was my intention with, with originally having these in the house, and then that was the reason to continue running these for, for doing these, um, you know, laser saber, super jewel ringer circuits and things like that. Um, so to get on then, what I'm going to do, this is basically going to be a patch, basically, or a modification to anybody that had purchased the... Uh, uh, Utilitech bulbs, the 7.5 watts that I'd recommended, uh, the, the dimmables, um, either in daylight or warm white, we're going to be using the daylights. Uh, again, they are more efficient. Circuit's identical inside, same power draw. You just get more lumens per watt out of the LEDs. So either bulb works here. This is with the Radio Shack 12 volt transformer that I'd recommended. I, I, this this tuning that I'm going to do here and show is specific to this bulb and this transformer, and if you use other transformer designs it will vary okay so um, this is just to try to you know like I said try to provide something better and more usable and viable for the people that did uh, get some of what I'd recommended there before um, so on the circuit itself we'll cover that first the circuit itself I'm showing still the diode on the positive uh, I do not have a potentiometer Okay, and if, if, if you want to do what I'm saying here, this, these are going to be very specific values. This is 330 ohms, okay? You don't need a potentiometer in there. That's a 3055. It was brand new to start the circuit. I have rechecked it with another brand new one, so you will get the exact same results. The Radio Shack 12-volt 3-amp transformer, 12-volt to 120. We're running across the 12-volt side. Again, I've tested in numerous cases. The 6-volt line is just not as efficient in terms of lumens per watt. So we're running across the 12 volt side and I've tuned the circuit for that um, and then our output basically is going to go straight to the bulb and what we're going to do is we're going to mod the bulb itself to get the extra efficiency since this circuit since this is not tunable you know like some of the other transformers that transformers that I said so we, we need to go into the bulb and that was what I tried to do so I'll give a little little coverage on how to do that um, the first thing with the bulb here is what you want to do is take a, a knife and try to get in behind between the plastic Let's see if I can do it here between the plastic and the metal heat sink that is the housing let me try to get my knife started and then I'll show you and be very careful when you do this okay 
there we go so I've got my knife tucked in behind there just enough to go down and then all we do is hopefully just snap this dude off there we go I believe I have it one more little tug okay and then it pops off okay and then that exposes the LEDs this is the LEDs that are inside of same number warm white or daylight doesn't matter um, so I want to note too if you're uncomfortable with circuits or electronics you can stop here with the patch or the mods this will improve about 50 lumens on an AC type bulb um, or you know will will get and then in terms of what we're doing here this will add you you know uh, five or seven lumens per watt popping the dome off uh, very easy to do so if you're uncomfortable with circuits you can stop there um, but you know to get the maximum efficiency we need, need to go ahead and keep going uh, the next step that you're going to do then is you're going to take on the bottom side right where the metal meets the black plastic here and take your Dremel and you're going to cut right around this edge cut all the way through there's nothing really in there just a couple wires back of the circuit board cut that all the way through and then that's basically what I've done there okay and then when you cut it through then here's the circuit board that's inside will be inside the bulb here and you need to unsolder these two wires and then you can just slide this whole thing out and then I clip the wires off the base here okay for the demonstration to mess with the circuit these are very nice circuits that are in these okay um, we've got basically an input uh, there's a bridge diode down there uh, there's a nice uh, LED driver circuit I'll talk more about that later output transformer cap filter goes to the bulbs um, so this is really why these are a lot more um, forgiving in the circuits this this circuit is designed to really take a lot of input and, and try to get it as most efficient as it can so then what I do is then solder on some new leads that are longer and this is just for me testing you know if you, you can this is all in the end you'll be able to assemble the bulb if you want so I've got some leads test to, to test and what I've done then is I've gone ahead and taped electrical taped back together the socket base and what you can do is when this is all done you can slide the circuit board back in and resolder this up and just epoxy that if you want uh, or run the circuit remote like I'm doing and, and mount this on top of a box okay so now we've got wires run out that are connected to our LEDs um, and I've got my base taped on basically for the light box to give the same height and now we're down to the circuit here okay so this is the input side of the circuit the white and the black the white's going to be our positive the black's going to be our negative and you can see a lot of components here uh, the LED driver um, is an SSL uh, 4101T um, very nice those are about four bucks for just that chip right there and you know you add up how many LEDs that are in there uh, we, we can't buy these parts and not, not to mention the heat sink um, yeah we can't we can't buy these parts individually for this uh, but this driver uh, although it is directly driving the transformer here this circuit this chip here can actually drive up to 300 watts of LEDs if you're running a gate drive MOSFET here on its output um, and it does run in power factor corrected quasi resonant flyback mode okay and it also can pop in and out of power factor correction based on the input load um, and that's why we notice this running in a, in a um, anybody that's played with these notice a, a low light period and a, and a high light state basically it can be on in both ways and that's what you're, you're actually switching back and forth from a power factor corrected mode to a non power factor corrected mode uh, in terms of what the circuits doing and the feedback okay um, so this might work really well for a lot of other circuits. I think you could take the, the back end off this, like I said, MOSFET gate drive and, and, and drive a whole lot more LEDs, probably very efficiently. So then first thing we're going to do here is right on the input we have a resistor here, and on the other side we have a resistor here. We're going to remove those. Set those there. They're about 22 ohms. The second thing we're going to do is we have a choke a coil here, one millihenry and we're going to remove that and there it is with the uh, heat shrink removed and then on the bottom side here where it connects those two terminals 
what you're going to do is you're going to just bridge across, solder a wire across those. We're bypassing this choke. Um, and if anybody remembers some of the 1.1 videos of the coils, the SJRC 1.1 and 1.0 that were tunable, that you know where the wave was actually able to be shown, um, a little bit of ringing at the top. Yeah, the ringing is coming from this little choke right here. So uh, then we also have right after that a series electrolytic cap. We remove that. Okay, and we're going to replace that with a one microfarad electrolytic. Okay, and then the next two steps. Here's the circuit here, and what we do then is the is the last step or the last two steps is right across this bridge diode from here to here you're going to put another cap in parallel. What you're doing, you're putting a cap in parallel with this 0.22 microfarad. And we're going to add a 0 0.047. Okay. And then I have here already the one microfarad electrolytic. I'll show you this at the end. The one microfarad electrolytic is there and I have bridged across. You can see a little wire where the inductor went. And then in addition to the one microfarad electrolytic, we're going to also put a 0.22 microfarad mylar film. Okay, and that again, that goes, you know, right, right there, where you're going to replace this 2.2 with a one microfarad and then add the 0.22. Um, and a note, um, I did do lots of numbers. I've been playing around with two lumens per watt for days. Um, and one microfarad film is all we need but when we go to a microfarad electrolytic it doesn't work quite as well um, so we're doing the 0.22 on here to kind of get some beneficial effects um, mainly because we can't get a 0.1 microfarad 100 volter to fit to fit in there and still go back in the in the light um, so yeah uh, I would do one microfarad electrolytic in replace of that and then like I said where it's soldered to we're going to add a 0.22 film so this is the circuit inside the bulb, and since I've got it out, I've got my wires run into the light box, and the bulb is sitting there. You can see the wires running directly to it. It's taped on and screwed on the base, so it's sitting at the exact same height, everything that it would be um, running on AC um, and, and, and my other tests so that I get similar results.